<laughs> Yo guys, um, we're doing three real clown horror stories. So like, oh my god, I call. like that's already scary. <laughs> yeah. And we're not doing a face cam. So yeah, because <laughs> it's scarier like this. <laughs> okay, Raven, hold, hold my hand. An age old enough to be aware of my surroundings and have a pretty good sense of danger, but also still around that age that attracts a certain selection of creeps. We live in a decently busy neighborhood. However, we're on a dead-end block near a forest preserve, and across the street from us is a sump. And if you were to go through the forest preserve, you would find yourself in a small community park. There was this one Saturday night that a mini carnival was being held in the park, and since I wasn't doing anything with friends, my mom suggested that I go check out the carnival. She isn't the kind of mom who tells her kids not to go out past dark. She always let me do my own thing. So I did end up going. I crossed through the forest with a flashlight and eventually passed the fence that led to the park and saw a lit up carnival rides everywhere. A Ferris wheel, a mini roller coaster, some of those big spinning rides, and of course concession stands and carnival game booths. It was late enough where it wasn't very crowded. There was also a big circus tent with the red and white stripes where I saw some people entering. I poked my head inside where I saw four rows of people in the audience. And on this mini stage were three clowns performing tricks. One was on a tricycle, one was juggling, and the other was just dancing around. Then the dancing one noticed me poking my head inside the tent. And he skipped over closer to me and started waving his index finger, signaling for me to come closer or to come onto the stage. I didn't really know. All I knew is I didn't want to do either, and so I walked away. I ran into a friend at one of the carnival games, and I hung out with him for about half an hour. Pretty soon the carnival was closing yeah. down, and everybody was starting to leave. I said goodbye to my friends, and made my way towards the woods again. I was near the fence when I heard... It came from behind me. I'd be like, I'll was waving me over earlier. He asked me if I wanted to check out the backstage area of the circus tent, and some of the cool things the guests cannot see. I said no very quickly and walked into the forest, looking back every few seconds to make sure I wasn't being followed. And I wasn't. The clown just stood there, watching me, with the painted-on smile on his face, making the situation even more disturbing. When I was out of view, I began to run for a bit, before I was confident he wouldn't be able to find me. I was not going to tell my mom what happened, because I loved being allowed out whenever I wanted, and I feared that this might ruin that. It's a half-mile walk through the woods. I was probably three-quarters of the way there when I heard it again. <laughs> this time, I immediately felt sick when I heard it. I turned and saw the same clown walking out from the darkness of the woods into the light of my flashlight. When he was close enough, I threw the flashlight at him and ran forward in the direction of my house. I heard him close behind me until the road was visible. Then I heard him turn around. When I got home, I was breathing like I had just run a marathon, and my mom was of course concerned. I still didn't want to tell her what happened, so I lied and said I jogged the whole way back. After that, it never came up again. I'd be so scared, like, oh, right now, God. leave a like if you think that yeah, like, you'd be terrified, like. Yeah, and like if that guy was. We still got a few more, and we might not get through all of them, but we'll try. Yeah. Up until the age of 14, I always had a fear of clowns, ever since I was first greeted with one at the age of five at a county fair. On a cold Tuesday night in November during break, my parents were on vacation and my sister and brother were out for the night. My friend, who I'll refer to as B, wanted to come over so that we could walk to the fair a couple blocks away. So he did. We walked to the fair, which happened to be in a big empty parking lot. We walked around for a little while and played some of the carnival games. Then we ran into a clown. He didn't speak, he just smiled, bobbed around, made silly hand motions. He resembled more of a vine than a clown. And he seemed to inch his way closer to us every few seconds. Me and B laughed, B patted him on the shoulder, and we walked away. That was weird, I told B. That was more creepy than weird, said B. We were walking back to my house now on the sidewalks of the quiet Tuesday night neighborhood roads. 
Of course, and that's when we heard time. something from behind us. It was a pair, was a pair of footsteps. We turned, we turned but didn't see anyone. This continued, this continued for another few minutes. B said, B said he was freaked out and was going to go home, but I convinced him to stay with me and hang out at my place. Honestly, because I was scared now. We were sure we were being followed. We made it to the front of my house. I dug through my pocket, took out my keychain, and started looking for the right key out of the three in the dark. That's when B nudged me to turn around. Oh, dear. There was a clown hiding in the next door neighbor's bushes, and he was staring at us. When he noticed that we had spotted him, he emerged from the bushes and started walking over to us. I began to panic, trying each of the three keys until the door finally opened. We entered and slammed the door behind us. I called my parents right away, who told us to arm ourselves and hide upstairs. We went up to my little brother's room and looked out the window. There was the clown standing in our driveway, looking up at the window we were standing at, as if he were waiting for us. I shut the blinds and we both ducked down. Breathing heavily and panicking, within ten minutes, he was gone. Oh, no, I guess he gave up. Or at least we think he was gone. For all we knew, he could have been hiding somewhere on the property all night. I'm just happy we made it home in time. Number three. Alright, this is... Oh my god. If you've seen the news lately, there have been many reports of clowns luring children into the forest. I was one of the first to experience this, and it was utterly terrifying. I want to remain anonymous at the moment, just in case the clown finds out who I am. Anyways, here's what happened. I am 14 years old and live in a small town in South Carolina. The town has a population of around 130 people. Summer was just about over, and I had a summer job working at the local lumber yard. It was a great place to work. I helped customers load lumber into their vehicles. A pretty mindless job. Plus, I was able to stay physically fit because of it. The best part is that my house is exactly one mile away. Walking to and from work is a daily occurrence. I spent a long day hauling and moving lumber, and my work day was pretty much complete. It was about 9.30 p.m. when I started to walk home. The moon was just starting to light up the road, and the sun had completely set below the hills. There are no other houses between the lumber yard and my house. Our town is very rural. The road home has hills that peak high enough that you're unable to see what's on the other side until you crest it. The road is skinny with no shoulder, but it was freshly paved. The trees stack one by one behind each other in a row, and vegetation is thick with a few game trails coming out to the road. Crickets and frogs sound like an orchestra. The walk home usually takes about 30 minutes. I've done it so many times that I entertain myself with music. I put in my earbuds, throw on some tunes, and away I went. I was about halfway home when I heard what sounded like a high-pitched cackling laugh. What the hell was that? I said to myself out loud. I took out my earbuds and stopped. I thought maybe it was part of the music, but something about it didn't fit into the song. I stood there motionless, looking to hear the same sound again. However, the frogs croaking were so loud that not even a scream could be heard. I thought nothing of it and walked home. The next day, I started my shift at 2 p.m. I started my walk to work around 1.30. Nothing was out of the ordinary. It was a beautiful day. I usually look down at my feet and kick any rocks that I see. Having them skip across the fresh pavement was oddly satisfying. I kicked a rock and it skipped across the pavement and landed next to something strange laying in the dirt on the side of the road. It looked to be a bright red ball. I picked it up, I gave it a little pressure, and it squeaked. Oh, I knew what it was. This is a clown nose, I said to myself. What the hell is this doing out here? I kept it and carried it to work to show the other staff members. I even put it on and gave it some honks. It got a few laughs. It's going to end in a couple of seconds. Around 9.30 p.m., so I clocked out and began about my long 30, so I'll I forgot my earbuds it. at home, so I was unable to listen to my usual so music. About, like, well, this is the ending of the video, guys. So, uh... I have a great time in Build a Snowman. Well, it's snowing where we are, so Build a Snowman. Yeah, where we are right now, it's snowing.
זה גם 100 יארד. 